Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. A little while ago, Ron from High End Antennas wrote to me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing one of his new antenna models, the Ultralight Mark II Packet antenna. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may be aware of the fact that I've had a lot of success with them. They're easy to deploy and I make a lot of contacts. As a result, I heartily agreed and asked Ron to send me one. Let's take a close look at the Ultralight Mark II Packet. Like other high-end antennas, the Ultralight Mark II Packet is an end-fed design, meaning that if you install it as a sloper, you only need one support point, preferably up high and in the clear. I should also note that this antenna would also work well if mounted in a horizontal configuration, though of course the radiation pattern will be quite different from that of a sloper orientation. The antenna is rated for a maximum 100 watts. The Mark II packet was designed to combine rugged construction, solid performance and light weight for applications where extreme portability and ease of deployment is important. This product fits into the high-end line as a very durable yet lightweight four-band coverage option where you are watching every ounce. I'm a backpacker so this aspect of the ultralight is of great interest to me. The weight of the antenna with the included durable Ziploc carry bag is only 315 grams or approximately two-thirds of a pound. If you want to decrease the weight even further, you could use a lighter weight Ziploc bag or forego a bag altogether and not take the included convenience wire spool. In order to minimize the antenna's weight, High End Fed made a smaller matching unit and put a silver plated BNC female connector on the unit rather than a full sized SO239. This means you will need to ensure you have coaxial cable with a BNC male connector on the antenna end or carry a BNC to SO239 adapter. For my testing purposes today, I will use a BNC to SO239 adapter to connect to a coaxial cable with a PL259 plug. As indicated on the label, this antenna covers the 40 meter, 20 meter, 15 meter and 10 meter bands. Frequency range on the bands is very impressive. Without the need of a tuner, the 1.5 to 1 bandwidth of the ultralight Mark II packet is 150 kilohertz on 40 meters. 350 kilohertz on 20 meters, 450 kilohertz on 15 meters, and 1.5 megahertz on 10 meters. Of course that means full band coverage for both CW and SSB on both 20 meters and 15 meters. The radiating element is comprised of 20 meters, that's about 66 feet of special wire. While the wire may look ordinary, in fact, inside the 1.7 millimeter diameter weatherproof polyethylene insulation outer coating is an aramid core wrapped with six 0.25 millimeter copper strands. Aramid fibers are a class of heat resistant and strong synthetic fibers commonly used in aerospace and military applications for ballistic rated body armor fabric. The breaking load of this wire is 60 kilograms or about 130 pounds. Breaking load is defined as the force that a piece of lifting equipment, lifting device or accessory can safely use to lift, suspend or lower a mass without fear of breaking. What this means is that this wire is very strong. Now let's take a closer look at the matching unit. The box itself is hard-wearing ABS IP65. On one end of the box is the BNC female connector. On the other end is the connection for the antenna wire and a key ring with a metal clip. Let's address the antenna wire connector first. The antenna connector on the matching unit is a female banana connector. As expected, the antenna wire terminates in a male banana plug. Ron at high end explained to me that he used a banana plug connection as opposed to a nut or a wing nut to avoid the potential for losing those in the field. The banana plug itself and the female banana connector on the matching unit are sealed. Water will not penetrate so there is no need to tape the connection. Since the antenna wire is attached to the matching unit with a banana connector, the keyring is provided as a strain relief for the antenna wire 
and an attachment point for the anchor, whether that be a pole or rope. It's important to note that the matching unit is designed specifically for a radiator length of 20 meters. While you could attach a different length of wire to the matching unit, the resulting SWR would mandate the use of a tuner. So now you have the specifics of the high-end ultralight Mark II packet antenna. From an HF portable perspective, it all looks good so far, but how well will it perform in the field? Let's find out. As previously noted, this antenna is well suited for either horizontal or sloper configurations, but today I've set it up as a sloper. It's the first weekend in March, and the ARRL International DX Contest is underway. Did I mention that it's about 0 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chill today? That's about minus 17 Celsius. I'm using my Yesu FT897D as the heart of an HF portable station. I'll be using a 17 amp hour SLA battery as a power supply. The 897D is set for 20 watts RF output to help me get the most out of the battery. The far end of the antenna, as previously seen, is attached to the top of my 40 foot spider beam pole. The near end of the antenna is tied off close to the operating position and attached to the 897 by a 12 foot coaxial patch cord. No antenna tuner will be used. Let's see how the antenna performs. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango again. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, portable. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike in portable, is correct? Roger, Roger. Okay, you're 591 k Copy that, please copy, 59 Ontario. Again, again, Texas, Tango X-ray. 59 five, five, Ontario, 59 Ontario. Ontario, Ontario, clear, sir. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, the Tango Mexico, Paul Lima. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Copy that, please copy 59 Ontario. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, thank you. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, Van IK. Copy that, please copy 59 Ontario. Thanks, Tango Mike, 6 Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. What's the Tango Whiskey? Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. With, with Victor Echo 3 again. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, 59200. Copy that, please copy 59 Ontario. That's good November, thank you, Charlie. Six Alpha Norway Alpha. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Yeah, copy on the call. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, 59 Ontario. Uh, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, Tango Whiskey Mexico, QSL. Copy that, please copy 59 Ontario. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Copy that, please copy 59 Ontario. Well, as you have seen, I've had no difficulty making contacts. Given my past experience with high end fed antennas, I'm not surprised at all. The Ultralight Mark II packet is a very effective, well built, easy to deploy antenna. If you're looking to make the most out of your portable operations and have your eye on a lightweight antenna that offers no compromise performance, on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, I suggest you strongly consider the high-end fed ultralight Mark II packet. And don't forget, with this antenna you can leave your tuner at home. 
I'd like to extend my thanks to Ron at High End Company for sending me the antenna to review. I'd also like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm already planning my next few videos, and I'd love to have you along for those. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.